Our guest on the program today is Ambassador Dr. Wallace Williams, a well-traveled Nigerian Trinidadian. He has dedicated over four decades of his life to forging ties between the people, businesses, governments, and civil societies in Africa, Europe, and the Americas in the areas of tourism, entertainment, media, culture, education, entrepreneurship, and youth development. Chief Williams, among other responsibilities, is the Honorary Consul General for the Caribbean Islands of Antigua and Barbuda to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the Cultural Ambassador to the Caribbean for Nigeria Ministry of Arts and Culture, and Chairman of Cold Logistics Africa Limited International Holographic and Security Printing Company Limited. Thank you very much, sir, for coming on the program. Thank you very much for having me. Let's start by asking, you're well travelled. Yeah. Give us a glimpse to the life of an ambassador. Well, you have ambassadors who are career diplomats. You have honorary consuls and consul generals who represent countries uh, who do not have either the, uh, the, 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 the space and perhaps um, the spread for certain countries. Um, but in our instant, uh, what was uh, good about this was the fact that I had taken um, the former president, Obasanjo, to the Caribbean, uh, to Trinidad, and then we went to Antigua and Barbuda for uh, garnering UN Security Council votes for Nigeria, when a lot of other countries on the continent did not want to support Nigeria. And I got him uh, the 11 OECS, which is the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States to support uh, Nigeria. And Antigua and Barbuda, the chairman at the time, was the prime minister. So we never had a relationship with uh, you know, a country like Antigua. And, and, and because of that, I was now asked to represent the country diplomatically um, in Nigeria for the help that um, we uh, gave to Nigeria. A show of appreciation, so to speak, uh, for the well, efforts Well, no, they needed to have in. someone. They needed to have someone. And if you know President Obasanjo, you know, um, uh, at the time, you know, um, when asked, you know, well, what, um, wh what do we do? The, he, he was told, look, you have someone who brought me here and who helped establish a relationship, uh, and that was it. So I was able to now represent the country since then you know, here in Nigeria and, and forge links and, you know, start expressing opportunities, you know, like bringing uh, Nigerians for foreign direct investment, for citizenship, for opportunities, etc. So Yeah, your CV is a long one, most certainly. I, I, I know. I, <laughs> just... I've been told that. My trend tell me that. I said, Dad, you know, you know, you need to either write a book on your experiences and your CV or just give snippets in different areas. Okay, and that's what we're hoping to get from you today, just yeah. an insight into the life that, you, that you've led, trying mm. to garner interest on what is truly African. Now, you've lived in other African countries. Can you tell us some of the unique differences in our culture that you think makes a lot um, of sense to you that we as Nigerians can emulate? Yeah, well, Nigeria leads in so many different ways, you know. Um, if you, you check anywhere in the world, any achievements by a, a, a non-American, for example, you'll find that it is a Nigerian who's doing uh, well either in medicine, either in culture, either in fashion, etc., etc., etc. But the continent as a whole, which is, you know, um, uh, South Africa or Zimbabwe or Uganda or Rwanda, all of us as Africans have some very unique things, our spirituality, our positivity, you know, uh, our swag, the way we, you know, the way we carry ourselves, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, Nigeria tends to lead in that, in that respect. But the good thing about Nigeria is the fact that we have, you know, 36 states, all different in different ways, and could be a reflection of several other countries in the way we, you know, we carry ourselves in those different states. And I think um, Nigeria should be given kudos for leading, you know, the continent in so many ways. I mean, we need to get a lot of things right, um, and we need to bring the economy up and raise the poverty level and spread, you know, uh, the, um, the, 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 the benefits, for example, of oil oh, yeah. around. 
you know. Okay, that, take you, that as an example. You, you grew up um, in the Caribbean before migrating to the UK um, as a young computer technologist, yes. and um, you saw firsthand how a lack of education and positive, uh, you know, mentoring can affect the young uh, people. Yeah. What are we not doing right when it comes to youth mentorship and development in Nigeria? I think what we're not doing right, um, where youths are concerned, is one. I think instead of spending money on large-scale projects, what I will call white elephant projects, do like India did, hothouse all youths. In other words, try and give them free education. Free education in the Caribbean, for example, in Trinidad, they have free education from primary right up to tertiary level. And they've been able to use that as a skill base to ensure that in the oil and gas industry, for example, you know, all jobs are held by trained aliens because they've been trained and they've been well educated and they've been well skilled. That should not be the basis, you know, of the parents to educate and to spend. It should be the basis of the country because that's your pool. That's your pool of uh, future, invest in the future, invest in the youths, you know, get them skills, you know, give them opportunities. Uh, ideas, for example, of, okay, we want to build on agriculture. Give the youths who have graduated, and instead of going on to Yahoo and all these other four or nine activities that we get infamous for, give them an acre of land uh, give them a, a, a homestead, what I'll call homesteading, give them a home, buy the produce from them, right, as a cooperative, you know, you have in each state and in each council area. So you start getting most of these people, you know, employed, but self-employed. And the self-employment means that they are helping the country and the economy to grow. This, this current administration seems to be you know, making a whole lot of um, noise about what the, the strides they're making in agriculture, the closure of the border, and you know, the effect it has had on the economy. Uh, do you think that is enough when it comes to empowering the youth? It's a good direction, but you need to go further than that. All right, uh, you have other areas. You know, try and get the youths into cooperatives. You know, I've talked uh, on inside the Niger Delta some time ago about gas preneurs, making them gas preneurs, for example, getting them to be driving uh, uh, um, what we call virtual gas pipelines on trucks, uh, get them to be fixing the roads. You know, um, Firma, for example, should now employ in each council area, get the use of about 10 or 11 or 12 and have them doing pothole patching, for example. Because those are all part of the infrastructure of the country and will help the economy of the country. So let's get it right. You can't do all the roads in one day, but at least if you supply the material and if you train the youths, they can be doing what we call intervention. You know, intervention, whether it's intervention in agriculture, intervention in infrastructure, infra uh, intervention in uh, the oil and gas sector. They are interventionist type of programs. And I'm willing to help in that area because I have the experience in the very areas I've spoken about. Yeah, before we go on a short break, I want to, you know, pick your brain on your decision. You had most of your kids you brought them back here to study in yeah. Nigeria. And yeah. we have this culture um, where we see most of our leaders sending their kids abroad to you know, uh, study, to get better education. What's your take? There's How not better education. We... There's not about better education. I think it's an excuse. Um, there is good education in Nigeria, and you need to be able to. This is where they will eventually come back to, if at all. This is their home. This is their country. The relationships that you form here are what is going to help you in the future. When you go to university in the United States or the UK, your friends and your contacts have spread around the world. It might be helpful if you're going to be an international business person. It might be helpful if you're going to be a diplomat. That's different. But if you're going to be utilizing your skills back here, you should start and try and finish here. There's nothing wrong with, for example, Lagos Business School, I'm a graduate there, right? Um, I would not go to Harvard, 
right? I may do some courses there, but Lagos Business School, the problems, the solutions are Nigerian and African based. So you try and do that, you know, um, you, you, you employ the skills that will help your country and your economy. So how, how can we get our leaders to basically adopt that mindset to train that money that they're taking abroad to keep it within the uh, Free industry? education. All free right. education. If, it, if the education is free, there's no need for them to go abroad. We certainly need to do something. Or no, else no, no, no. I'm saying we lot. have to. All there's right, no we'll go, ifs or buts about that. All right. We'll go on a short break. And uh, when we come back, we'll be talking about what happened with the first act 77, among other issues here on One on One. Just stay with us. Mm -hmm.